Welcome back to another episode of Pedalbox, and today we are starting to finish the paintwork on the Thunderbird. Yes, we've made great strides recently getting rid of a lot of the really bad rust on both sides of the car. You can see on the side closest to the camera, I finally finished getting all of that done and we've put some high build primer on it. So that is now all tarted up, ready to go. And we could put paint on that if it weren't for the fact that there is still a lot of surface rust on the deck lid here at the back and the roof and spots on the side and generally all over the car. And that means we have to sand it all down but I can't start sanding it right now. I've got to deal with a lot of the trim around the edge. A lot of this is really good, nice new trim. So I need to cover this all up because I don't want to disturb it. I don't want to take these pieces at the back off, risk disturbing the seal on the rear window. I don't want to take this piece off if I can avoid it for the same reason, but there's a lot of junk underneath it and that's going to take a long time to do by hand. For the majority of it, I'm going to use my DA. Now this is a Roots Bigfoot Duetta. This has a five inch pad and that's what I've used on a lot of the car actually uh, on this side and what we've been using on the kit car project to smooth it out as well. Because a lot of this doesn't actually need to go all the way down to bare metal. Obviously where the rust is that all needs to come off but where a lot of the paint is on the sides on this side and on that side where I've given it a couple of test passes it's actually in pretty good condition. The paint is reasonable and I don't think it needs much more than a cleanup just to get the roughness off before it needs painting. Now there are a few pieces of trim I'm going to take off including the bumper at the back. It's got a little bit of a a twist to it as well so I'm going to try and bend that out in the garage and I'm also going to go down this side obviously around the door handles all the way down the doors and get everything done and that's my goal for this week so this is going to be spread across quite a number of days but for you it'll all be just be one episode. Now first up before I can get too far I need to deal with all of the chrome trim that I want to take off and all of the stuff I need to cover up. Now I started on that side, as you can tell, where I mentioned I'd done a couple of test bits just to give it a clean up and see what it was like, because it looked to be one of the better areas of the car. I just have to finish up the rest of everything. Moving on to the bumper, I've got a reasonable idea how to take this off and I'm pretty sure I need to lose all of this trim and light section in the middle. And that'll get me into the tabs on the main section which seem to bolt onto the uh, bodywork itself. So the plan is to just pull all of these little posies out. Now I've already gone round and checked with a small screwdriver that all of these are loose enough that they're not just going to horribly strip themselves apart and I can actually just spin them out quite quickly now with the rattle gun. Okay, so it looks like the center section has to come off first, which I haven't finished taking the screws out of. There's two up here. And I'm hopeful that that will be it and the first piece will now come off. Hmm, apparently not. Please hold. And there's yet more screws across here because of course there are. Which one did I miss? That one. Cool, so that is all of the trim off that side of the car. Now I just have to make sure that these bolts are the ones that I think they are, and they hold this on, and then work out what holds it on at the top. Well, these fixings that I thought were just little rubber gaskets to stop this rattling are actually where the main tabs come round to, and they are to stop the, uh, the bolt marring the bumper and it rattling and generally try and hold it in place. But the only way you can get to the back of them is through this panel on the inside. There's one on each side of the back and they have been completely sealed up. So I'm assuming I have to remove 
the lights to get into something to get into there or to get around it because there's no other way in without breaking through what looks to be original factory seal which seems a little bit weird as a disassembly method if you have to unseal and reseal a giant panel rather than just unbolt something so these are the next things to come out Cool. That was only slightly less painful than I imagined. Is this cast aluminium? God, this, this whole thing across the back here. Yeah, I think this is cast aluminium because this is really heavy. For now, this is just gonna go into the boot and stay there. Good news, I think this whole bucket that the uh, lights were attached to actually comes off with this surround which is a little bit easier because the bolts down here the 5 8 ones are the sorry 7 16 ones were incredibly tight whereas these ones are actually reasonably good so I almost think like these ones have been off and on again which would make sense given there is a dent in the end someone's probably tried to fix some stuff and we know that there's a lot of bondo on the back of this so I suspect that is the case but it also means I don't have to or don't necessarily have to undo these ones just to get this piece off because they're horrendous to try but that should be all of these loose now I should just be able to throw the impact gun on and then these will come loose well that took far longer than it should have done but finally the bumper is removed after about an hour and a half of angrily fighting with two bolts one on each side to try and get them to release the one on this side that was particularly stubborn actually came away when I dropped a screwdriver down the back to where the little square nut was in the frame and jammed it and then it just whizzed out. One of the ones on the other side did that but it was reasonably close anyway. The last one that took nearly an hour to get out I ended up having to drill the head off much like I did one of the smaller ones and then use a cold chisel and a lump hammer to just break the head off because I didn't have a drill large enough to go all the way down through the 5 8 inch bolt. So that was an absolute nightmare trying to get that off, um, but this should now just pull off the back of the car, assuming it doesn't get stuck on the uh, wiring, which I can feed back through there and through there. So now we can get to sanding the rest of this. Obviously around here is gonna need a little bit more work. I'm gonna to have to pull this um, rubber seal off because the seal is basically perished inside here. It's just breaking up into lots of little pieces. Basically wherever it was clipped and pinned into the bodywork, that's where it's broken because that's where the break point in the rubber was when it shrinks and expands. That's where it work hardens and it fails. So we need to get into this, get all of this rust sorted. There's a couple of little tweaks in the bodywork down here that I'm gonna try and straighten out as well. There's one around the license plate holder on the back. And then, yeah, hopefully we should be able to get on with sanding this. You can see how much paint dust has come off this as well as the rust as well and it really is very very light the rust that's actually on the roof although it's staining fairly badly across the top of the paint when you take that top off it's really really light there's no big divots in any of the body panels or the roof panels so far anyway the side has come up really nice as well we've just taken off that oxidized layer from the top so this should take the primer really quite nicely now before I get too much further into this I'm going to wipe this down with a bit of white spirit as well just to try and get as much of the dust off as possible and then give it another go with a fresh piece of Abronet. Well, 
Well, this side of the car was a lot worse than the other side. Um, more of this is down to bare and rusty metal. It's come up quite nicely. There are still no really bad patches. This bit is a little bit rougher down here, but I think that will come back up okay. All the way across to the back, you can see the difference between unfinished rusty and uh, and the stuff that's been rubbed down by this 80 grit Abernet, and it does look significantly better. Hopefully we can get all of it back down to looking like this, all the way to the back, and then start uh, treating the rust, and then we can leave it and move on to some other bits of the car. So you can see over this side of the car, I've put some of the acid down. I've just sprayed it quite liberally across the top of the car and just left it to do its thing for a little while. And now it's starting to not so much pool, but you can see where it's kind of soaked in just a little bit. It's not quite as glossy in some places. Obviously the acid has reacted uh, and there's less of it just sitting on the surface. I just wipe over the whole surface again with a rag just to redistribute it and take off some of the excess. I have found when I've done this in the past, the excess can go a little bit sticky and almost not quite form a film, but it is a little bit harder to remove if you let it dry out too much. Um, when you're wiping it across like this, you'll find that the um, paper that you're wiping it up with uh, just tends to stick where the acid is instead of working through. So just wiping it around, um, you can redistribute what hasn't reacted into areas that there is still more re uh, rust to work with. Now you should really wear gloves with this. Obviously I didn't. I found that my gloves had a hole in them and now my hand is covered in acid anyway. So I'm going to go and rinse this off in this bucket of water I have right next to me to try and solve that problem. So that's pretty much all we can do on the roof right now. This needs to completely dry off, so I'm going to have to leave the cover off overnight as well, or at least as long as this is even remotely tacky, and it is just ever so slightly tacky at the moment. The, uh, the acid needs to do all of its work. I've wiped off all of the excess, but basically this top section is done. So I'm going to spare you some time, start working on the rest of the car, and hopefully come back once I've done all of this treatment to everything that we've not already painted. And here we are with my white whale. This is very prophetic name for it at this point. It will be going back to blue, but for now it is primer white. And this has taken me the better part of about four days to get it to this level because wet sanding this is absolutely hellish on your shoulders. Um, I've got a DA, obviously we went over the entire thing with the DA with some 80 grit on uh, and then some 240, then put the high build primer on and went over that with the same 80 so it was a little bit, it was cut down a little bit, it was probably closer to 120 in all honesty and then 240 again and then I wet sanded this with 400 grit wet and dry just to get a slightly better finish. It's still not great. It's definitely not what I would call body shop good, but it is pretty flat. It's nice and smooth and it should give me a good enough finish for what I want to achieve for the time being. So yeah, this was absolutely a chore to get all the way down and get everything sorted. Obviously we've got to clean the windows up at some point from all of the uh, like slake runoff from when we were doing the roof. I did manage to take this uh, piece of tr trim off, this massive chrome grill that sits just below the window is actually the outlet or inlet, I guess, depending on which way it goes. I haven't worked that out yet for a vent that sits behind the rear seats. Um, and I did try and dig out a lot of the sort of detritus that was sat behind it with a little sh a long, long thin screwdriver and the vacuum cleaner, but I couldn't get the DA down to do a really good enough job of this little strip behind the, uh, the boot lid. So I ended up taking it off. It's only four screws and there's a little mesh in there. And it's a really good job that I did because I got so much more material out from inside here. So that vent should actually work really nicely. And being, well, it's seven screws, one of them's missing, um, it's actually really easy to take in and out, and I can give it a good polish up as well, so it's going to need re-chroming at some point, but it will look a lot better. The rest of the chrome is actually held up really well, same for the tape. I ended up taking all of the filler out of the seam lines between the uh, roof and the drip tray and everything around there that sort of seals those panels together. So I need to put some new sealant in that gap as well. The other stuff had just cracked apart and it was so brittle, it really wasn't doing anything. So that all came off. Other than that, we had to put some filler on in a couple of places just to deal with some of the pitting in a, just a few spots, mostly at this corner actually, more than anything else, and a little bit over this arch, uh, where something had obviously been resting up against it, holding the moisture and really eating into the metal, but that 
it wasn't too deep it was just you could feel the sort of the dimples on the surface so that sorted that out and I had to put a little bit more on that corner as well just to fix where I ate into some hidden bondo because of course there was a big uh, a big crater of it somewhere and I accidentally took it all out when I was going over it with the DA which was a little bit unfortunate but I stopped before it got too bad and I've managed to fix that so yeah that's um, that's pretty much where this episode's going to wrap up because we apparently have a couple of days of rain coming so I want to get this all covered up I'm not going to be able to paint this in time to get uh, to get it to cure and everything else with the humidity going up and as I say this rain coming in so I'm just going to put a tarp over it put the covers back on get everything sorted protect it from the weather and then paint it in a few days time and hopefully next episode we're working on the Thunderbird it will end up blue well no I'll tell you next episode we're working on the Thunderbird it will end up blue and if you'd like to help us in that or more importantly get the uh, kit car through the IVA by helping us buy parts for that you can support us at patreon.com forward slash pedal box show all of our patrons get discount at our merch store as well which is shop.pedalbox.show which of course I'm not actually wearing any merch today go me and if you haven't already make sure you subscribe to the channel like the uh, like the video and comment that really helps the video get boosted in the old YouTube algorithm and we will see you on the next episode either working on the kit car the golf or the Thunderbird or maybe something else who knows we'll see you next time though thanks for watching